Okay, last uh, last episode in this portion of the series is uh, showing the program monitor here and how the program functions. Program monitor is very similar to the source monitor uh, in that it shows um, a couple things here. It has time code. It has the duration of the entire um, sequence right here or the entire timeline right there. And it also uh, that this will change to an in and out uh, duration, same as it does over in the source monitor. You can also do in and out points in your timeline. If you set an in point, you'll notice that change. Do an out point, you'll notice it change. The, now the in point and out point duration is 15, uh, 15 seconds to 8 frames. If I clear that, uh, you can do the same thing. Option X will clear your in and out point. It shows the duration of your timeline, which is a minute, 15, and 3 seconds. And this shows you where you exist, uh, where your playhead exists. It exists at 49 seconds and 17 frames. Now you've got the same zoom tool here that you do in the source monitor. This is going to go a little quicker because it's very similar to the um, to the source monitor. The main difference is this is used for some quick trimming. This window is used to show your final movie as you cut as you play between edits. This will display wherever your playhead is. If I press play, you'll notice it plays the video clip. You see this edit here, right there. Get it right before that. Watch this when it hits that point. It'll do the edit to the next clip, and boom, there it goes. So this display, the, your playhead displays the edits and shows uh, the frame that you're on up here in the program. This is what your movie is going to end up looking like. This is your final movie up here, basically. Uh, you do have this uh, playhead scrubber right here. You can grab this and move it back and forth, uh, same as in the timeline, and this will update accordingly. Um, you have this zoom tool, the same as the source monitor. You can zoom way up on it. Then you have your little uh, zoom bars here to kind of pan across the image, see different por portions of the image, or you can just click fit and it'll fit the screen. If you're doing compositing, you can do like 25% and show it in a smaller window. This is your canvas right here. I'm going to show kind of a quick little version of compositing here. I'm going to grab this video. I just double clicked on this. We'll show you this later in compositing. But I'm going to move this to the side. And notice uh, this is what your image is going to be looking like on a television. You will see actually this black image right here. This square, this black portion is your television basically. So I just moved that to the side and you're just going to be seeing that portion of your image. Uh, but out here in this gray area, or the, I mean the, whatever color this is out here, you're not seeing that on the image at all. Um, if I put that back, or if I grab this again, you'll notice this wireframe. It shows you kind of how much of your image exists outside of your canvas area here. I'm going to undo, get that back to normal there. Um, Okay, let's show a couple other things here. I'm going to put this back to fit. Uh, you do have ways of putting on markers right here, the same as you do in the timeline and in your source monitor. You can add markers, which we'll get into later. Uh, you have in and out right here, same as your source monitor, but it does it on the timeline. You click an in point or click an out point, and there you go. It's I and O, same as in the source monitor for setting in and out points on your timeline. Option X to clear that. Uh, if you do have in and out points set, you can use your Shift I, Shift O to jump between those edits or hit these items right here to go between your in and out keys. You have frame by frame stepping back, or you can use your right arrow or left arrow to go frame by frame. Shift arrow left and an arrow right goes five frames at a time, and your playhead. Exact same as your source monitor. You do have this little frame, uh, export frame portion right here. You can click. And you can export out a still image, a JPEG, and then import it into your project if you wish to use that still frame. Um, and you have your wrench tool to set up. Uh, we'll get into this when we get into uh, compositing, some other modes here, uh, multi-camera, playback resolution, a whole bunch of other, other things here that we'll get into later on as we get into editing. Uh, these are the basics here. Um, once again, we got this little resolution playback uh, pull down. You can tell it default show full. Usually, like I said, 1920 by 1080, you can do full. Anything above that, you're usually going to be doing half or quarter, depending on uh, your processor speed. If you have a Red Rocket card, a Black Magic card, or a whole bunch of different other things that you can use in Premiere to accelerate to the playback of 4K footage and, and above. Um, so usually you'll have this on half or full, depending on if you're doing red footage or if you're doing DSLR footage or something uh, not such uh, so taxing on your system like red footage you can do full. Um, with DSLR footage we can do full 
and we're fine. I'm going to hit Option X and clear this. Uh, and then you've got two other keys right here. We're going to get into this when we get into editing. You got lift and extract. And I use very rarely use these because I use shortcuts, which is your semicolon key and the quotations key next to it uh, for lift and extract. That's basically if you have an endpoint and out point in your timeline and you hit this key right here, lift, what it's going to do is cut out your in and out and get rid of it. Um, extract, what extract does is it will, it will take it out and fill the gap. Do that, it did the cut, it pulled that out, and it filled the gap there. Uh, we'll get into that later as we're getting into editing. I'm going to undo that, uh, clear my in and out point, and that is really basically it with your uh, program monitor here. You do have some other options up here that we'll get into, very similar settings to what you'll see under this little toolbar here. So we'll get back with that later.